about 30 miles outside New York City in a little Long Island town called Amityville, a mass murder took place. November 13th, 1974, 23-year-old Ronald DeFeo Jr. killed his family, his parents, four siblings. 13 months later, the Lutz family decides to move in. The Amityville Horror has been the subject of many debates over the years. Is it true? Is it fake? Hmm. A lot of people say they find this book in the nonfiction part of their local library. According to the author, Jay Anson, it's 100% true, 100% real. According to the Lutz family, it's 100% true, 100% real. What do we know about the Lutz family's paranormal activity they experienced in this house? After everything came out, we did find out that uh, George Lutz liked to dabble every now and then in the occult. According to the book, every morning at 3.15, George would wake up. 3.15 was the approximate time the uh, DeFeo murders took place. The Lutz family claimed that they constantly smelled strange odors and green sludge would come out of the walls. Doors knocked off their hinges from the inside out. But with all of these things that we've been told, there have been many questions to the validity of the Lutz's stories. There is information that George and Kathy took a lie detector test after claiming all of these activities and they passed. But at the same time, it came out that they were bogged down with financial fees and legal fees um, that they had a little falling out with their attorney who he has come out and said many years afterwards that this was all fake. The three of them came up with this story over many, many bottles of wine. One of the sons, Daniel, to this day lives in Queens and he has been on record as to say that living in their house has ruined his life. He continues to this day have nightmares about his experience in that house. Ron DeFeo, the murderer, is actually still alive and he is in a New York correctional facility where he's serving six consecutive 25 year sentences. He of course was initially claiming to hear voices in the house that made him do what he did. Since then though, he's changed the story a bit. The Amityville house actually still stands with a new address. Originally 112 Ocean Avenue, it is now 108 Ocean Avenue. Same location, different number. The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. Classic, but controversial. Fiction or non-fiction? So the book itself, um, it kind of plays out like, a, I, I got a feeling of like a stage production. Pretty much straight in your face, no holds barred, here's what happened. So we have the Lutz family, George and Kathy. They're three kids. The three kids are Kathy's from, from a previous relationship. Uh, two boys, one girl and they're looking for a house. They come across this house in Amityville. They find out about the history of the house. Um, you know, they were a little bit worried about that, about, you know, moving into a house with that kind of history, but $80,000 for this huge house, they couldn't pass it up. They want Father Mancuso to come and bless the house. He does, he comes to bless the house, but while he's in there and he's blessing the house, he kind of gets attacked by these flies, right? In, in the room that will become known as the sewing room. Um, at the same time, he hears a voice. The voice says, get out. He, of course, doesn't tell George and Kathy about this, not until he leaves. Things start happening to Father Mancuso throughout the book, too. He like, experiences flu-like symptoms three or four times throughout the book. His hands get all these blisters. It's like he's he, like, like the, the demon in the house is starting to mess with him outside of the house many, 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 many miles away. And he tries to, you know, call George every now and then. And George tries to call him every now and then because they need help with this demon house. Nothing but static on the line. Uh, they keep losing each other. Meanwhile, things are crazy at the house. Kathy feels the, this presence in the kitchen with her. She feels like somebody is like wrapping their hands around her. The kids start screaming. There's this black sludgy stuff coming up through the toilets. Green slime coming out of the walls. Like the walls are bleeding green slime. 
Oh, and George keeps breaking up at 3.15 every morning. 3.15 is when uh, they believe Ronald Fair Jr. decided to do the, the murdering at 3.15 in the morning. Um, George is going through a whole character change, too, throughout the book. Kathy's noticing that he's not shaving, that uh, his hair is getting long and, and nasty. He's not showering. He uh, owns a surveying company, and he hasn't been in work to work for you know, several weeks now. It's in a uh, financial situation where he's not going to be able to get out of it. There's the issue of missing $1,500 for his brother-in-law on his wedding day. And that money was never found. And all of these things start happening. Kathy starts to levitate in her sleep, and George can never get warm. And the thermostat is constantly saying 80 degrees. But he's out there chopping wood, throwing wood into the fireplace. It's, you know, it's toasting in there, but he, he, he's cold. He's like bone cold. Over here, throw in an imaginary friend of Missy, the daughter, um, Jody, Jody the pig. <laughs> this is like a, a demonic pig. George has a friend whose wife is in touch with the paranormal. She guesses, hey, I bet there's a well buried underneath your house. And George didn't know about this. She feels that's where the spirits the demon spirits are coming up through the well, getting into the house. Turns out there is a uh, hidden room in the basement that George finds. There is a well. Finally, Father Mancuso is begging the, fam the family to get out. Just get out of the house for a while. And contact a uh, research company. He gave them na the name of a research company. Contact them. They'll come out, do some tests, figure out what's going on with the house and see what they find, right? George even tries to bless the house, which I guess causes so many other problems with the house right it all comes to a finale when things are totally crazy super crazy one night kathy decides to scrap the kids get out of here they get locked in their house for, for a while trying to get out the, the van won't start they finally get in the van they finally get you know the van started and they leave they get out of there george contacts the uh, the, the research uh, company enter ed and lorraine warren this is as far as the book goes, our first contact with Ed and Lorraine Warren. And of course, if you're a fan of the uh, Conjuring universe, then you know all about Ed and Lorraine Warren. Whatever is here, in my estimation, most definitely of a negative nature, it has nothing to do with anyone who had once walked the earth in human form. It is right from the bowels of the earth. Those are words from Lorraine Warren. It says on the book, A True Story by Jay Anson. Now, there's also word that the Lutz family did not work directly with Jay when he was writing this book. However, he did have access to about 45 hours worth of, of tapes of the Lutz family recording um, things that they went through while in this house. Was it all a hoax? Was it financially driven by the Lutz family? According to the lawyer, Yes, did DeFeo actually commit the mass murder? He has since then changed uh, you know, his story. He's not going to get out anytime soon. He'll most likely die in prison, obviously. But, you know, initially he was saying he had these voices in his head. Or he had these voices, you know, telling him to do these things. And that's why he did them. He used a, uh, a high-powered rifle. We're talking like a super loud hunting type rifle. None of the neighbors heard anything. Six shots. Uh, supposedly, he drugged the family at dinner time, so they were all asleep, belly down. All of them found the same way, um, and he used this high-powered rifle that, you know, you can probably hear almost a mile away. But all of the neighbors around his house heard nothing, nothing at all. The book itself is not a must-read. Finding out the story behind it, that's where the fun comes in. The book itself, anyone could have written a book. Uh, like I said earlier, it's it's not you know brilliantly written. There's not a lot of suspense in it. Uh, there's not a lot of build up. It's basically straightforward, in your face. This happened. This happened. This happened. This happened, which is probably why it's leaning closer to the nonfiction part in the library. Or when you're searching for books, is under the nonfiction part. True or false? We may never know. It does make you look at flies differently. Oh, they couldn't have used anything nastier. A lot of flies in the book. All of this information, pretty interesting. So you come up with your own conclusion. See ya.